asking Chuck Pagano about the timeout with 115 left in the fourth quarter of Sunday's loss to the Lions. Um, can you explain the reason behind making that timeout, calling timeout with, I think, with like 115 left? Was there... First of all, he poses the question incorrectly. The question should be, Chuck, when you decided to take that timeout late in the fourth quarter, why did you take the timeout so early in the play clock when the ball wasn't even set yet? So between the time from them setting the ball, then the actual 25-second play clock beginning, you had well over 25 seconds that you could have milked off the clock, milked the play clock down to one, and then take your timeout. Why did you jump the gun and immediately take the time out so right off the bat the question is posed incorrectly and Pagano look how lost he is he has no idea what timeout this man's talking about something you didn't see you want to trace, do something differently just the reason behind it they're late in the game <laughs> no in the first quarter you moron obviously late in the game with 115 left what I mean Jesus Christ Jesus Christ I'm on the drive where you guys scored the touchdown too yeah. late you guys called a timeout with I think 75, 65 seconds. Yeah, uh, we wanted to get the guys in the huddle, get a play called. Um, yeah, we could look back and say, you know what, it'd been nice to, you know, bleed a lot more time, you know, off the clock. Um, See, but you could have done that, and that's why I'm pissed off that the question is posed incorrectly, because he kind of gave him an escape in a sense where he could dance around the question. If the question was on the play clock, it would have been tougher for Pagano to try to duck and dodge the question and be able to give this BS answer he gives. First of all, if you go back and rewatch it, as Jason Spears pointed out today on Twitter, there were no personnel changes. So Pagano's talking about personnel changes. They didn't even make a personnel change during this timeout. The same 11 guys that were on the field the down before remained on the field for the next down coming out of the timeout. So there were no personnel changes. Picking your play, you could do all that crap. If you want to evaluate the personnel to make sure you have the right personnel, if you want to change the play and pick the perfect play for the scenario, you could do all of that after the timeout with one second left on the play clock. There's no reason to be taking the timeout before the 25-second play clock is even set. The ball wasn't even set yet, and he's already taking a timeout. It made no sense. The clock is on your side. You have a minute and 15 left from the 12-yard line. You should be milking the clock down. He talks about the best of both worlds. We could have done both. We could have done both. You could still take the timeout. The problem I have is not with the timeout. It's when the timeout is taken so early into the play clock you have to milk the play clock down to one second and then call timeout I don't know how Chuck could be such a freaking moron to the point where he doesn't comprehend that you know looking back on it could we have you know burned more time off the clock yeah. yes yes you, know. you could have the play clock wasn't even say yet yes you could have burned well over 20 seconds I mean more than that 25 maybe even more than that seconds milk the play clock down to one just unbelievable but uh, we had some personnel issues. We want to get a few other guys. But you didn't. Oh, my God. But you didn't. You no know, different personnel group in there, whatever it was. But no. Decided to call a timeout that, that's, that's not what it was. You didn't change personnel at all. Oh, my. You did not change personnel at all. You kept the same 11 guys on the field. Regroup and get back to line of scrimmage. We felt, like, we felt like it was more important at that time to, um, you know, get back. It, you know, whatever you feel is important and whatever you wanted to accomplish during that timeout, which had nothing to do with personnel because the same personnel stayed on the field, you could have done that after milking the play clock to one second. I don't understand why he doesn't understand this, and it all goes back to the question being phrased incorrectly. Get gathered, get a call in, uh, get settled, because uh, we still you know, needed the touchdown you know, and felt like, you know, shoot, they're going to have to... You know, they're going to have to go whatever they have to go to, to get in field goal range and we could close it out. And it was crazy because I was like, why is Jim Caldwell not calling a timeout? And trust me, we know all about Jim Caldwell. But man, it was a battle of the morons. A battle of the absolute morons. Why are the Lions not taking a timeout? So why don't the Colts take a timeout and just hand them a timeout? That way, when they get the ball back with 37 seconds, they have all three timeouts. It's like the Lions wanted to get the ball back with 10 seconds like the three timeouts were going to mean anything. It made no sense from the Lions' point of view why they weren't taking timeouts, and then the Colts just hand them 25 seconds. I, I really just don't understand the method really by either team, and it was a battle of the morons, and Chuck came out the bigger idiot. That's basically what it is at the end of the day. The defense really running out of gas, but the 
tackling specifically. Oh, forget about forget about the defense running out of gas. I don't want I don't want to hear about that. How could the defense run out of gas? Did they run out of gas in the first half when they gave up three touchdowns on four possessions? They ran out of gas right out the gates. I don't want to hear about the injuries. First of all, the linebacking core, in my opinion, was the worst aspect of the defense during the course of the game, and they're probably the healthiest group on the defense. When you look at the D-line, the secondary, which is all banged up, and the linebacking core, the linebacking core was the biggest weakness, and they were the healthiest group out of the three. And then, if we're talking about excuses, I don't want to hear it. Because on Sunday Night Football, the Patriots went into Arizona without Tom Brady, without Gronkowski, and they are able to pick up a win on the road in Arizona with a backup quarterback and without the best tight end in football. So I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear any excuses about who was or was not on the field for the Colts. I don't want to hear that. That's crap. Pagano is a horrible coach. Ryan Gritchin is the worst general manager of all time. The Colts now fall to 1-4 and four in week ones under Chuck Pagano. The one win coming against the Oakland Raiders when Terrell Pryor was quarterback. So our one win in a week one matchup with Chuck Pagano as head coach came against a quarterback who is currently a wide receiver. I mean, that is just one of the most pathetic things I've ever heard in my life. The Colts, now you could add another game to it, have gone 57 games, including the six playoff games, without a 100-yard rusher. Haven't had a 100-yard rusher since week 15 of 2012. Pagano, now 0 for 1 in challenges in 2016 after going 0 for 6 in 2015. So that means Chuck Pagano hasn't won a challenge since 2014. I don't know how you go the entire 2015 season without finding one error, one infraction in the officiating. How you could go a 16-game schedule where you don't find one time where a ball might have hit the turf. Or one time a guy might have stepped out of bounds. You somehow went the entire 2015 season without being able to catch one error on the officiating. In an entire 16-game schedule, I have no idea how that's possible. Also with this loss to the Lions, Chuck Pagano now falls to 14-19 and outside the AFC South in his head coaching career with the Colts. Not including the 6-2 mark that Arians posted. Those games are on Pagano's official record. But in my opinion, when I look at it and I evaluate Pagano, I'm not going to give him credit for the games he didn't coach. Pagano is 14-19 and in my opinion outside the AFC South and those are the only games I look at. So when you look at Chuck Pagano, 2012 in my opinion, he went 2-2. and When you look at the only two full winning seasons that Pagano coached in 2013 and 2014, the Colts were 22-10. and When you look at inside the AFC South, 12-0. and Outside the AFC South, 10-10. and Chuck Pagano is an absolute loser. Ryan Gritchen, I say it all the time, the worst general manager in the history of sports. The Colts have zero defensive players left from the 2012, 13, and 14 drafts. The Colts have zero...